Today's video is the cooking video of my latest five meals for under 25 pounds from Aldi. These are my weekday essential meals. Meals that are so easily made, super budget friendly, really quick. All of these meals can be made in around 30 minutes or less and they're so delicious. We've got sticky orange chicken, we've got broccoli and cheese bake, bean burritos, chicken fajitas. I have actually already uploaded the haul and shopping list video, which I will link down below for you to go and watch. But yeah, do enjoy this video, enjoy the recipes, um, some of my absolute favorites, and let's get straight into it. Okay, so this is the mushroom spinach and mascarpone pasta, an absolute essential. If you've not already eaten this or made this from one of my previous videos, you have to, it's so blooming good. So it's super duper speedy. It's often one we go to when I want to make something super nutritious, filling, but I only have about 15 minutes to make it. So um, the first thing you want to go ahead and do is chop up your veg. And whilst this is happening, I am heating water for the pasta. So I've got three garlic cloves. I'm also going to take the stalks off of my mushrooms. I do actually keep the stalks because I put those in um, stock when I make stock later in the week. Um, so slice up your mushrooms, slice up your onion. This is a great one to throw in um, any leftover veggies, but also it's a good one to make on like a Monday. So a Monday when you're sort of in a rush and maybe you have some roast chicken left over from the day prior. And um, it's a great one to just throw some leftover chicken in as well, but um, we're having it just as it is tonight. So get the onions and garlic fried, some smoked paprika, and then you're gonna add your spinach. As you well probably know, spinach, you can put tons in and it wilts down to basically nothing, which is why I love spinach so much. It's such an important part of my diet. So make sure you are topping the pan up with olive oil. If you um, let it go dry, the spinach will easily burn, but yeah, just topping up with olive oil. Now I'm putting my mushrooms in, going to fry those down for a little while. So onions, garlic, paprika, mushrooms, spinach, all fry that together until it's nice and soft, keeping it topped up with olive oil. You can add a little bit of water if you want, if you don't want to keep adding olive oil. So now that's fried and as you can see it's all combined together and it's all gone really nice and soft. It's not burning. I'm going to add some salt and pepper to the mixture. And then I'm going to add my mascarpone sauce. So I've turned the heat right down because I don't want this to cook too quickly otherwise it will curdle. But mascarpone as you can see it will go in as a huge thick lump and then slowly but surely it will turn much more liquidy, much more soft as you can see. So it's a really thick, creamy sauce now. I did actually have some very old acidy wine <laughs> left over in the fridge. So I thought, you know what? This will go very well with this dish. So I added that to make it even saucier. Completely optional though. I normally never do that, but I am the type of person who just chucks things in. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But it's absolutely delicious and then you just want to add your tagliatelle directly into the pan and that's going to soak in some of that sauce oh so good i really recommend this one my next weekday meal is black bean cheesy burritos this is probably the most a delicious weekday meal you can make on a budget. Such a nutritious meal. It looks like it will be loads and loads of effort and it will take ages, but it is such a quick meal. Honestly, it's such a quick meal. So first thing you want to do is chop up your onion and get your onion fried on its own for a little while in some olive oil. Whilst the onion is softening, you want to open your tins of black beans. Um, I get the black beans in water from Aldi open them, put them into a colander and you want to drain all the liquid out of them and then rinse them as well because the liquid they come in is a bit claggy. So give them a good rinse. And once they are rinsed off, just leave them in the colander. You want to add some smoky paprika to your cooking onions. I'm also going to add um, cumin powder. I'm also going to add some all ground spice. Lots of these spices you can get from Aldi. 
we have lots left over from Tesco, but the all ground spice is optional, but coriander, smoky paprika, and some chipotle chili flakes, or some sort of chili flakes is probably the more essential out of all of them. I'm also going to add a very special secret ingredient later on in this recipe, so keep watching for that. Um, but give those spices and your onions a really good stir around, make sure everything's coated. You probably won't want to keep adding a little bit of olive oil or butter um, to this recipe whilst your onions are cooking. Also adding um, about a teaspoon of coriander, it really does make a difference. So once your beans are drained and washed, you're going to put them into the pan along with the onions and stir it all together. The beans don't take long at all to cook. What you want to do is to soften them a little bit, but they need to keep most of their texture, which is um, what gives you that sort of really nice burrito feel. So throw the be beans in. I'm going to stir them with the onions for a while. You can keep them all whole if you like. I'm actually going to crush a lot of these beans. I'm going to show you shortly. So going, so whilst they're frying for about five minutes, I'm going to start slicing up my washed peppers. I use a green and red one. I'm going to add these into one half of the pan. I'm going to leave half of the pan clear of my veggies and things like that because I'm about to crush some of those beans. So adding in um, my veggies so they can start cooking and now I'm going to start smushing down some of my beans. So just get a potato masher and you want to smush them down. This gives a little bit more of a saucy texture um, to your beans. You've got half of the beans which are whole and half which are crushed down. It's looking a little dry now so this is where you're going to go in and add a little bit more olive oil and then hot water. Stir it all together, it does look a bit claggy, so what I'm going to do is after I've added my tomato puree, I'm going to keep mixing in water and it will make a gorgeous, thick bean burrito style sauce. The flavours are all combining. This really is such a quick, easy throw together type meal. I'm going to put the lid on for a while and steam the veg because that's a quicker way of cooking it. But as you can see, it's turning a little bit more into a sauce. Adding salt and pepper and then I'm going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. This is going to bring out the depthiness of the beans. You don't have to do this um, but it is a good way of bringing out the flavour. I am bringing in my secret ingredient in a minute which will actually just make this dish what it is. And here it is, it's Marmite. Yes, Marmite really adds depth into this dish. It just works really, really well. You can use beef stock if you want. I always have Marmite in the cupboard because I enjoy eating Marmite on toast. <laughs> so I add Marmite. It's just such a great dish for any sort of dark style recipes like these. So as you can see, it's turned into a really nice sauce. Now the sauce really is just made up of crushed beans, tomato puree and water. So very few ingredients go into this recipe, but it's packed absolutely full of flavor. And then we're going to bake them for a little while. So start assembling them into wraps. We had mozzarella in the fridge, so I'm adding mozzarella inside the wraps. Um, they That really did make a very good difference. So if you've got mozzarella like kicking about, definitely add it. Um, so start assembling your wraps and you want a an oven proof dish sort of like this one. We're going to make four large wraps. There is going to be also some chili, chili beans left over as well. So once you've assembled your wraps, you want to add it into your casserole dish. So here are the four wraps in the casserole dish. Next thing I'm going to do is top with some of the remaining chili beans. Just a nice thing to do. You've got some on top, some in the middle, and um, yeah, it keeps it from going dry. And then I'm going to add lots and lots of cheese on the top. And we're going to bake it in the oven for about 10 minutes we will do. 10 minutes at 180 to 200. That'll be more than enough to melt the cheese, crisp up the bread just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more texture. And um, yeah, it's such a quick dinner. I think it took about half an hour in total. Such a quick dinner. And it's one that everybody loves. Like this is just such a good dinner. And also 
it's vegetarian friendly but if you did want to add some beef you can add some beef um, you can also add some chicken but it's just a nice easy veggie packed dinner and um, yeah we all like it I had some chives and spring onion in the fridge and I thought why not why not add that so I did um, and I'm also adding a little bit of hot sauce because my husband is addicted to hot sauce <laughs> so I added some hot sauce and actually I have to say it was it was very good um, if you've seen my fridge clear out videos you know I have an entire fridge of condiments and 50% of those condiments are different types of hot sauces so I am exploring all these hot sauces bit by bit um, but yeah there you go the really thick gorgeous it's gooey it's cheesy it's stringy and then it's got some crunch in there and you have the sour cream and guac on the side which absolutely totally makes it um oh gosh it's just one of my favorite dinners and definitely a weekday showstopper in my opinion Okay, next up we are making the cheese and broccoli bake. This is probably the cheapest dinner out of them all, <laughs> but it's it's such a good way of just using up ingredients in your cupboard. If you think you've got nothing in, generally you've always got something to make cheese and broccoli bake. So this one's great because we're going to use the broccoli stalks. Um, stalks of broccoli often get thrown away, but they are so nutrient dense. And once they're cooked in something like this, um, there's no difference really. So the first thing we're going to do is make a roux for our cheese sauce. This really does sound like it's going to be maximum effort, but it's not. I really, really think it's worth practicing doing this because the payout is so big. Homemade cheese sauce is worlds apart from anything you can buy in the supermarket. So give it a go, it's so super easy. So the first thing you're going to need to do is melt some butter in your saucepan. You want um, a large nub of butter. Melt your butter and once that's completely melted, um, you want to add a heaped tablespoon to two heaped tablespoons of plain flour and then mix that into the butter. What you're going to get is a thick yellowish Play-Doh type thing. It's going to go really thick. It's gonna completely take up all of the butter into the flour. And yeah, essentially you're going to be left with a lump of Play-Doh. And then what you want to do is keep it on the heat. It's medium to high heat, but you need to be with it all the time. Slowly start adding some milk because milk is going to be the base of this sauce. So here I go, I'm adding, bit by bit, I'm going to be adding milk and I'm going to be stirring it into the lump of Play-Doh that you've made. Um, but this will start separating and you'll see a really thick sauce is starting to appear. The flour, it will take some time because the flour will keep sucking in any moisture so it will keep turning back into a Play-Doh style thing. But be patient, just keep adding little bits of milk at a time until you get the consistency you want. It's a very, very easy thing to do. You can make most sauces um, in this way. I often make peppercorn sauce uh, this way. I'm adding bit by bit my milk in and it's becoming a nice thick runny sauce. And I have swapped to a whisk now because you want to make sure all of that flour has separated. Once you've got a nice thick sauce, um, you want it a little bit runnier than how you want your final product to be because the cheese that you're going to add to this sauce is obviously going to thicken it up. So a little bit runnier than your final sort of desired outcome will be for mac and cheese. So I'm starting to grate my cheese. So mature cheddar, you can really honestly just stick with mature cheddar, loads of pepper and hey presto, you're done. I had some other cheeses in the fridge, so that's what I'm adding. I'm adding a bit of red Leicester, I'm adding um, a little bit of Parmesan, and yeah, obviously lots and lots of um, mature cheddar. Um, so once the cheese is grated, I'm going to prep my broccoli. So get your stalks. You just want to um, cut the first layer off, really, the thick sort of rubbery layer that's not gonna cook very well. Um, because underneath this, you can chop this up and once it's softened in water, it's it's great. It's great to eat. So I'm cutting all of um, the hard knobbly bits off. Then I'm going to chop it up in small pieces and we're going to steam or boil the broccoli for a little while just to make sure it's nice and soft. Then you want to grab a handful of little broccoli florets and you want to also trim those up 
To be honest, you can just stick to these stalks, but I like to add normal broccoli as well. I don't want to chop it up too finely at the moment because we are going to um, be cooking it first. So just chopped up into small chunks, not too fine, especially the florets. And then you want to put those um, to cook for a while until they're nice and soft. So meanwhile, while the broccoli is steaming, I'm adding the cheese into my sauce and I have cooked the pasta and I'm adding it into a casserole dish. And look at this cheese sauce, look at this cheese sauce. It is divine. You're going to want to add lots of pepper. I personally love pepper, so I add lots and lots of pepper. You don't really need to add much salt because there's a lot of natural salt in cheese. Um, but add it to your cooked pasta. You want to cook your pasta a little bit al dente. Um, add it to your cooked pasta dish. And here we've got the cooked broccoli. So I'm gonna take the cooked broccoli and chop it up a little bit more fine. Now it's um, nice and soft. So I'm chopping it all up and then I'm going to add it into my pasta dish. Then we're going to bake this in the oven for around 15 minutes at about 180 to 200 degrees. This will um, give a nice crispy sort of topping, a nice chewy, crispy, cheesy topping. Oh my gosh, so good. And then it's ready to serve. It's a really like on a budget style dinner. If you're on a proper budget, you can make this. This is all cupboard essential food. Every single part of this is a cupboard essential type item. So it's definitely one that I would recommend making and give it a go making cheese sauce from scratch if you've never done it before. It's super duper easy and do you know what? It's so much better. Um, so yeah, we really enjoyed dinner that night. Absolutely delicious. You can serve with more veggies on the side. I, I like serving with honey glazed carrots on the side because it's so good. Okay, next up, easy chicken fajitas. I have to say, for me, fajitas on a weekday, as a weekday meal, are 10 out of 10. It's like the peak weekday meal. I love fajitas so much. Grabbing my chicken and I'm dicing it up ready for seasoning. So seasonings to use for chicken fajitas. You can buy the pre-made um, packs, but it's actually a bit cheaper to sort of stock up on your own seasoning and then season it yourself. Um, super easy. Smoked paprika, cumin powder, uh, maybe some chili flakes if you like. Uh, I do actually use a little bit of chicken seasoning just because it's got a nice barbecue flavor. Um, and yeah, that's, that's generally it. Maybe a little bit of oregano as well. To add my chicken into the into my trusty dish uh, with some onions and then we're just going to fry that for a while on their own. Whilst that's frying um, you can prep your veg so I always add peppers and mushrooms into my fajitas so I normally have peppers mushrooms and onions and um, sometimes I add sweet corn but generally peppers mushrooms and onions is always. Um, so slice up your peppers, slice up your mushrooms and they are going to be fried with your chicken shortly. And you're just going to leave that to fry until it's all cooked. The veggies have softened a little bit. Whilst that's cooking away on a medium heat, I'm going to be getting the other bits ready. So I'm going to grate some cheese because cheese in fajitas is a must. I'm going to microwave some of the um, wraps because I like them a little bit warm. Get my sour cream and chive and guacamole ready. We have this sauce in the fridge, a salsa verde, um, which Lawrence loves, so I did that. And there you go, that is honestly chicken fajitas. <laughs> it's so easy, it's a 15 minute throw together, throw together type dinner. I have to add cheese to my fajitas. I just really enjoy cheese in my fajitas. Um, and then obviously the guacamole and sour cream, I really like to pile it up as you can see. Um, but such a delicious go-to meal and one that we love. Okay, we've got our sticky chicken, orange and rice. <gasps> This one is so good. So first thing you're going to do, really simple, you're going to add your chicken into an oven proof dish 
add some olive oil I did actually use sesame seed oil today because I had it in the cupboard and some salt and pepper and some paprika and then I'm going to bake this um, as it is in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes when it's essentially pretty much cooked um, I am going to bake it with the lid on just so it doesn't go too tough because we are doing a little bit of cooking after this so mix all the marinade together and cook it in the oven uh, for 20 minutes at about 180 degrees Celsius. Whilst that's cooking in the oven, I'm going to prep my orange glaze. So first thing I'm going to do is squeeze the juice out of two oranges. Uh, oranges are so good from Aldi at the moment. They're very, very sweet. So yeah, I really recommend. And look how much juice I got just from like one and a half oranges, to be honest. Um, then I'm going to add garlic to the mixture. Um, I'm going to crush the garlic into the mixture because uh, that will spread evenly when we're adding it later on to our dish. I'm going to add a big glug of dark soy sauce, to be honest, about two tablespoons worth. I'm also going to add a large tablespoon of um, clear honey, a little dash of apple cider vinegar, it gives it just a little bit more of a bite. Um, you can add a little bit of sugar to this, but I think the honey makes it sweet enough and also the orange juice. So yeah, um, so that's the sauce and the glaze ready um, to add to the cooking chicken later. So then I'm going to prepare the toppings. So I've got spring onions. I'm also going to be adding some peppers. I'm also going to be adding some peppers into the frying process. So once the chicken is out of the oven and it's basically cooked, I have actually um, just chopped it up into little chunks and then I'm adding a little bit of flour. You can add corn flour, that would be best, but I didn't have any in the cupboard. Um, but I'm adding some plain flour to the chicken now and I'm frying that so the chicken sort of absorbs the flour. This is just going to make it um, a little bit of a thicker sauce when you're adding the sauce. So fry it together with the sauce for 10 to 15 minutes. Obviously um, you want the chicken to like really take that sauce in. Also the sauce is going to go nice and sticky. You can have it a consistency that you choose. I actually reduce the sauce down to almost nothing. But sometimes I do keep it quite saucy and don't reduce it too much. It's completely up to you. Um, what I would also recommend is if you like spice is adding a little bit of chili peppers to this because it works so so well such a delicious easy meal i've cooked my rice and as always i've added peas to the rice just because i can't have rice without some lovely petit pois <laughs> and then i'm adding um after i've cooked my peppers for about five ten minutes and um, with the whole mixture i'm adding it to the side topping with some sesame seeds and some spring onion and there you go it is a really delicious dinner um, it's quite a dark night when dark day when I made this. So unfortunately, lighting isn't great, but it is a really, really delicious dinner. Highly recommend it. Um, and yeah, enjoy. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you again really, really soon for a new video. Bye.